<sighs> Good afternoon everybody from London and my usual haunt Ebury Square which is just outside Victoria Coach Station and yeah the reason I'm here at this time of day is because I'm taking a no not a National Express and not a Megabus and not a Flix bus I'm taking a coach with Expressway Euro Lines and it's going to take me all the way up to Dublin in Ireland in conjunction with Irish ferries uh, but for that part of the journey we'll be crossing the Irish Sea between Holyhead and Dublin um, sometime around one or two o'clock in the morning oh I tell you what I'm really interested in trying this route um, it's gonna be a bit hardcore I think uh, but I'm hoping to get a little bit of sleep once we get on the ferry why don't you come with me for this trip it's gonna be an interesting one isn't it and um, I will see you on the coach yeah, so first of all, as I began walking towards the coach station, it started absolutely throwing it down. <laughs> so I took shelter for a bit and waited for it to brighten up. I noticed this very interesting building over the road, the National Auditor Office, which was previously the Imperial Airways Empire Terminal. Now built in 1939, this Art Deco masterpiece is superb, isn't it? And would have been the gateway to much more opulent travel than I would be taking this evening. And I made my way down the street, uh, and then it started raining again. <laughs> but I, yeah, I did eventually get to the coach station entrance. I'm not going to show you too much on Victoria Coach Station this time, as I've covered it on many other previous videos. But suffice to say, uh, my coach would be departed from, as always, the very far gates. It was quite busy in this area, as there were some late running coaches, uh, and I would imagine that Friday afternoon rush hour in London is not the best time to be getting a coach. Now, anyway, our coach had arrived on time and was waiting in Bay 20, as you can see here. And now, boarding formalities are a little bit different because, as you can imagine, we will ultimately be entering the EU. Uh, so, as well as ticket checks, there are also ID checks. And now, not necessarily passports, but some form of valid ID, such as a birth certificate. Now, all this was done by the driver of the coach, and they would be checked again by immigration officers later on in the journey. Hello. <laughs> but uh, yeah, good news is there doesn't seem to be that many people on the coach. Although there were people trying to get on other coaches banging on the doors, they were already shut. As usual, there, Victoria Coach Station, chaos. Um, but yeah, it, it doesn't look badly at the coach actually. I'm not quite sure what it is a Mercedes something. Uh, but we'll get on there in a bit and um, see how we go, shall we? Yeah, it was a 2022 Mercedes-Benz Turismo 41002. Uh, pretty much unliveried, if that's a word. Uh, apart from some Euroline stickers on the front, back and sides, that also showed the route and the service number 871. Now, I was carrying an extra bag for this trip and decided to put it in the luggage hold out of the way. It certainly wasn't going to be very busy at this point. I would estimate uh, probably around 20 passengers in total. Not All right. so far. <laughs> well, I'll get you to sleep tonight. <laughs> Looks nice coach. Yeah, it's, it's not bad at all. This Mercedes as well. So first impressions upon boarding were, yeah, quite nice inside. And uh, notice here that there are an assortment of blankets and pillows provided by the driver, I think, uh, for those people who wanted them. And the driver, incidentally, I thought was really good. Uh, there were no other staff available on this trip. He did absolutely everything. And I'm led to believe uh, from other passengers that he is the regular driver on this route. Uh, nice and helpful, uh, though you wouldn't want to mess with him, um, as you will find out later on in the video. Anyway, well, while it's still light, uh, we'll have a quick look at the seat area. Uh, a flip down seat back table to start with, an integrated single cup holder. Uh, we have a footrest here, which you may or may not find useful. And the seat itself was comfortable enough with a padded headrest, a Mercedes badge here, which I thought was pointless, but a nice touch anyway, I guess. And it felt uh, well padded overall, but uh, yeah, as with any of these journeys, the, the proof would be at the end of the trip. All right. The leg room was okay, actually, and not too bad at all. Apologies for the lighting on these clips, by the way, but uh, yeah, Victoria Coach Station does tend to be pretty dark, and unfortunately, the interior lights of the coach didn't really help that much. Uh, WSB sockets are located above your head, as are the air vents and the individual reading lights, although these didn't work, which 
<laughs> yeah, it didn't really help the lighting situation. Right, uh, let's get going. We escaped the clutches of the coach station one minute early, uh, heading into the London evening with some beautiful views of the Thames and the evening skies as we drove towards an enormous queue of traffic, all heading west for the weekend, I suspect. Do you know what? It took us one hour and 18 minutes to reach the M40 and as we got to the outskirts of Oxford it was time for an emergency break as the driver put it. Uh, yeah, the smokers on the coach were very appreciative at this point. Anyway, five minutes later everybody was back on board and we headed off to our first stop of the evening, Birmingham. Now our coach actually called into Digbeth Coach Station which I thought was exclusively for National Express coaches. But interestingly, you are able to book a ticket for this trip on the National Express website. Expressway is basically Bus Aaron's premium coach service within Ireland and obviously this particular journey is its long distance route over to the UK. As a result, they must have some kind of agreement with National Express in terms of shared ticketing and services. However, if you are thinking about trying this route, I would strongly advise booking direct on the Expressway website and paying in euros rather than with uh, the National Express website. The uh, reason being, uh, well, I paid 39 euros in advance, whereas the same trip booked uh, via National Express was 69 pounds. Uh, yeah, that's some difference, isn't it? And incidentally, uh, walk-up fares for this journey were going for 99 euros. I reckon about six people got on at Birmingham and we were quickly on our way again. We were about 20 minutes late at this point but uh, the roads were a lot quieter now and yeah, there was a nice little atmosphere beginning to emerge on the coach, a kind of a we're all in it together sort of feeling, uh, which yeah, it certainly made the time go a little more quickly anyway. Now because there was only one driver on the coach, uh, he needed to take his designated break uh, so I found myself in the salubrious environment of Schiffnall or Telford services on the M54 and drinking cheap wine out of a plastic cup with one of my fellow passengers. Well then guys, about 10 past 10 in the evening we got to Schiffnall services on the M54. Um, yeah, we stopped at Birmingham and about half a dozen people got on there and, and that was about 20 past 9 so they've only been on the bus for about uh, 45 minutes and then they had to get off again because the driver needs to take his break. Uh, but yeah, not too bad really. The coach is, uh, is okay, not the best one I've ever been on, but um, it's not too bad. Uh, now after this we're going to be heading up to Hollyhead, so it's right the way to Hollyhead. It's got about two and a half hours, something like that, I reckon it's going to take us, and then we'll be on the boat. And um, yeah, the boat, I think the boat leaves about 2.45 and then we'll get into Dublin about 6.30 in the morning. So yeah, the next leg now, so uh, I will catch you again when we get to the boat and we'll see what that's like, shall we? See you in a bit. Right, off again, heading towards Shrewsbury, uh, then up past Wrexham and Chester towards the North Wales coast. Uh, time to check out the toilet, I think. And this is your typical mid coach, down some steps kind of toilet. A uh, bit of a squeeze, uh, but then you have a well illuminated mirror beneath which is the soap dispenser and the sink, uh, which had cold running water available. Oddly, I thought this was an air dryer at first, then I um, yeah, realised it was just a paper towel dispenser that didn't have any paper towels in it. Yeah, at least there was some toilet roll available to use. Now one thing to note, uh, the floor was like really sticky and there's only one reason why that would be, isn't there gents? And yeah, I know it's unnatural, but uh, it's always advisable and normally requested that you sit down when you're having a wee. 
Anyway, all in all, it was fairly average I guess, um, I didn't bother using it again on this trip. It was 01.20 in the morning by the time we got to Hollyhead Port. Uh, we drove up to the barrier here, then you know, once we were through that, uh, we drove around a bit more until uh, we reached some kind of building where we had to get off the coach uh, with our ID papers and get them checked inside the building by the immigration officers I mentioned earlier on in the video. Uh, then we got back on the coach and we drove around a bit more and we finally ended up in one of the vehicle lanes with everybody else waiting to board the ferry. And after about 15 minutes in that, uh, we proceeded to drive onto the ship. Oh, by the way guys, I always forget to mention this, but if you want to get exclusive access to extra content for my trips, then why not become one of my Kofi members? I also send out regular updates via email, and you get to have your name at the end of the videos too. The membership starts at just a pound, and yeah, it'll be great to have you on board. We are in deck five, blue stairs, okay. Yes, yeah, so remember this right, the coach driver here gave us very clear instructions as to where we were parked and which stairs to use when finding your way back to the coach later on. Now I'll explain the reason why in a minute. But I was pretty tired at this point and we were able to use the lift to reach the main passenger deck on deck 9. Uh, there were a few things open but I didn't really feel like exploring at this time of the night. But uh, yeah, if you want me to make a dedicated video on this ship in the future then uh, please let me know in the comments below. Right then guys, uh, on the ferry, uh, Ulysses, Irish ferries, Ulysses, in Holyhead, um, it's about 2 o'clock in the morning, and I think it departs in about 45 minutes time. Uh, yeah, I did think about getting a cabin, but um, they wanted 48 euros, and the um, coach driver said, we've got to be back on the coach ready to depart at 5.45 at the latest, because it will not wait just go and we're pretty much near the front of the boat as well and uh, so we're going to be one of the first ones off so yeah to be honest I've just found this sort of quiet corner here in the bar I'm just going to crash out hopefully get a couple of hours sleep here uh, it's comfy enough so uh, yeah we'll see how we go shall we and uh, I'll catch you a little bit later on in the morning Yeah, I reckon I maybe got a couple of hours sleep overall, uh, but it was soon time to head back down the stairs, the blue stairs, where our coach was waiting for us on deck five. We were driving off the ferry when, guess what, right? One of the passengers got left behind. He managed to catch up with the coach, luckily, but instead of apologising to the driver for being late, he had a massive go at him saying he wasn't happy. It's like, like 
not happy about what himself for being late uh, the driver consequently repeated what he'd said over the PA earlier on and then they got back on the PA and asked everybody else on the coach to confirm what he'd said uh, we all agreed with the driver and the passenger was suitably humiliated <laughs> you know what um, there is always one isn't there always well you've got to laugh I guess uh, I mean most of the passengers on the coach were really friendly and it wasn't like other coaches I'd been on uh, there was a real collective spirit amongst us uh, well apart from one misery anyway and as we drove through the streets of Dublin I thought about the pros and cons of this journey and I mean it's it's cheap enough, uh, but when you compare it to budget flights from London, there's probably not a lot of difference in price when you add it all up, and obviously it's a lot quicker, isn't it? And if you don't want to fly, uh, well, the train and ferry combined sail rail fares are comparable too. Okay, it still takes about nine hours on the train, but you can do it in the day, and that in itself has its advantages too, doesn't it? Yeah. So, yeah, whilst the coach had, well, certainly been an experience, it's just such a long trip and ultimately, for me anyway, uh, that's a real deal breaker. We actually got to the Basaras terminus in central Dublin about 15 minutes early. I collected my bag and staggered into the departures hall out of the way. Uh, the coach certainly didn't hang about, it was off. So yeah, after a couple of minutes I found a suitably picturesque spot next to the River Liffey where I just uh, took a minute or two to summarise my overall thoughts on the journey. Right guys, Dublin Islands, 6.30 approximately in the morning and yeah, to be honest, um, I probably had about uh, two hours sleep on the ferry I'm feeling reasonably awake considering uh, but yeah, I mean, 12 and a half hours from London on the coach and the ferry well, it's an adventure, I'll give it that but it's not something I'd be wanting to do every week to be honest with you uh, but I tried it and, and that's the thing, isn't it? I've tried anything once the coach itself was okay uh, but yeah it's just a bit of a slog uh, to be honest um, I'm heading out to the airport now uh, to catch a flight but, but otherwise it would be like what am I going to do in Dublin for the next six hours before any hotels open kind of thing but it is what it is isn't it now let me know what you think in the comments below and um, thanks for coming along with me on this adventure and as always guys your support is really appreciated and I will see you on the next journey cheers for now